We need to talk. There's a lot wrong with this picture. I mean the book, but I also mean that this is not the ideal setup. This is not the ideal time of day for me to be doing this because I'm not getting the light I would like. My home office is still almost done, but not done. But I just want to get this over with. Because if you ever read a book and you're just like at a point where you're just like, I just want it to end and you stick with it, you stick with it for whatever reason. Well, that's kind of where I was with this one. So this is Anyway the Wind Blows, the third in the Simon Snow trilogy, or I don't, whatever it's called, Simon Snow, yes. <clears throat> there will be spoilers, so if you don't want this book ruined for you, don't click off now. Uh, I'm not going to put the spoiler warning thing up because I just, it's just, we're going to, we're going to chat, we're going to talk. So. <clears throat> Let me start by saying I loved Carry On. I liked Wayward Son. It, you know, I felt like the tone of it was a little dark and depressing overall, but it, you know, I, I still read it twice. Um, I've read Carry On several times. And this one, I'd be happy to never read again. And I think, I mean, this is the problem with anything that starts out really well. It's hard to maintain. So part of this is just um, <laughs> um, that aspect of the situation. Uh, but part of it is just that this book is kind of all over the place. Uh, it needed, you know, one more good edit proofread pass. Um, okay, so where we left off. At the end of Wayward Son, they're in California. Penny comes running over to Baz and Simon on the beach and says, there's trouble at Watford and they need to go home right now. All of that sense of urgency is completely gone in this book. All of the tension is just, I don't know. I don't know where it went. Somewhere between ending that and starting this, this is mostly, <clears throat> this this book starts with them already back and like scattered. Uh, Penny is taking Shepard to see her mom because she wants her mom to help get rid of Shepard's curse. Uh, Baz has to go save his Aunt Fiona who got in trouble for breaking into the headmistress's office, which is Penelope Bunce's mom, so you know, again. Um, <clears throat> And Simon has gone off with Agatha to the well-beloveds, and he finds out that the mage left him everything in his will, you know, uh, and Simon has that internal conflict of, should I actually accept all this money and everything, considering I killed the guy and he was a villain and whatever. Fine. Then this big kind of relationship drama between Baz and Simon. And... You know the saying, a little goes a long way? Yeah, there's a lot of it here and we didn't need as much of it as we got. I get the feeling, and I don't know, I, I, I don't know, but I get the feeling that here's an author who wrote what she thought people wanted and the plot ends up taking a back seat to, you know, all this relationship stuff. Whereas it ends up slowing down the plot such as it is. Um, because it's kind of all over the place. It's pulled very thin. It's kind of like pizza dough where you pull it so thin that there's like little holes in it. <laughs> like, that's how it felt. Like, um, like instead of focusing on the plot and the pacing, we, we got just a bunch of Simon and Baz trying to figure out their intimacy issues and then Penelope and Shepard falling for each other just as expected and Agatha and a new love interest um <clears throat> and there's this plot with this new new chosen one uh and a cult kind of forming around him and there could have been a really good story in that but the focus isn't there because the focus is so diffuse it's so much more about Baz and Simon and their relationship and you know um, 
that like the 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 chosen one thing ends up feeling incidental and shepherd's curse feels up ends up feeling incidental and um yeah and then the kind of this rushed ending uh where you know finally simon realizes he's lucy salisbury's son um uh, well well, we won't get into that. Okay, so he ends up realizing he, you know, uh, and it's just kind of tacked on there at the end. And um, we never really address any of the American stuff. Uh, the the um, We never address, like, the vampires in Vegas. Or the, you know, that they, 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 a couple times they mentioned, should we mention it? Should we tell? Uh, you know, but... Um, and it ends with Shepard inviting Penelope back to the U.S. and saying he'll go get his truck, which is still in Las Vegas. And so I kind of wonder, is this not going to stop at three? I mean, is this actually a trilogy or is there going to be more? Because at this point, I kind of feel like there's some stuff that's kind of left loose or, um... But maybe, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe this is it. Maybe this is what you get. And if the quality keeps doing this, maybe I don't want more. <laughs> maybe I'll just let the fan fiction writers, like, do the job. Um, I started a, a fanfic after Wayward Son that I, th I'm not biased, but that I think was a more interesting story than this ended up being. But that's just me. Um, Maybe I'll finish it. I never finished it because then this book was coming out and I felt, well, you know, but maybe I'll finish it and post it anyway. But, okay, so, um, in the, at the end of the day, I gave it three stars on Goodreads and I put 3.5 in my review and, like, that's when I'm feeling generous, it's a 3.5. But, um, I know a lot of people, uh, have, uh, dinged this for the representation because Simon does at some point just kind of he's like do I have to know what I am or you know like because you know, Baz is like are you are you bi like because he finds out that Simon and Agatha did have sex and now Simon doesn't seem to want to have sex with Baz so then like what's the deal are you are you bi are you not into the physical like and Simon's like Mm, you know, do, do I have to do I have to put a name on it? Which I think is to a point legitimate. I think we have um, kind of a, uh, an obsession right now labeling things and figuring out and cubby holing everybody. And you know, maybe it doesn't matter as much as we think it does. But um, a lot of people are still figuring things out. They don't know what to call themselves, and that's a legitimate concern. But then uh, they never really kind of address it again either and so I think some people who felt seen and represented in the earlier books now feel like <laughs> it kind of was like it ended up being like a um not a thing or you know like it it they ended up being tossed into an ether that you know this kind of cloud of non-existence or something I I don't know I um I don't like to talk about my, I, I have, I have a site, I have a post on my blog about my identity because it's complicated and I don't like to get into it, but, um, yeah, so, uh, I, uh, uh, I, you know, I think at the end of the day I was disappointed. I was disappointed in this book. I, I was hoping for a good strong finish especially since Wayward Son like I said had kind of this depressing darkish aspect but there was a lot planted that I felt could go somewhere and uh in this instance it was almost like that book didn't matter except for Shepard uh and his curse and for getting Agatha back to England I guess um, and, you know, I've, I've, I, they mention in passing again, you know, Simon says to Baz, 
but wouldn't you rather go be with these cool vampires and live forever? And he's like, no, I don't ever want to go back there. And that was just kind of it, you know? <laughs> like, that was the end of it. And I was like, mm, really? And yeah, there are some, th some other things hinted at uh, um, about the way vampires work. Obviously, Baz doesn't know a lot, and he learns a couple things in this book that kind of help it make sense for him a little bit. Um, or make some things make sense for him. Um, but, yeah, overall it was just for a book that's like 560, 70 pages. How many pages? 572. And then there's an epilogue. And the epilogue is just Agatha. We don't even know. Like, so 575 pages. It didn't need to be this long. <laughs> it really didn't. And uh, unless and unless the plot had been expanded and we had reduced the the relationship stuff, because like I think what made you know things like Carry On so good is that the that kiss is like this moment, and here it's like these drawn out like they go on and on and I'm just like we don't we don't need this like I get that they're working things out but a lot of it is repetitive and a lot of it is um, confusing like it's not well described what's actually happening so I'm like is she being coy because she didn't want to be explicit or is the like I don't know it just uh this book didn't work for me, end of the day. <laughs> and now I'm gonna hand it off to my daughter because um, she's been, like, I normally I would read, if, if it had been good, as good as I hoped, I would have had this done in like two, three days tops. Um, I just didn't even feel like I needed to pick it up. Like, it, you know that urge you get to pick up a book and read it? I didn't have that. I didn't have it. Sad, but there you go. All right, so that overall is, I guess, my just spur of the moment highlight, high level critique of this book. The writing is pretty typical. The characterization of Simon, I just, I don't understand some of his, even when you're in his head, like some of his mental processes don't make sense. And I know that Simon is confused and whatever, but like, at least before, I always kind of saw his, like where he was coming from or what his point of view was. And here, I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get what your hangups are now. I, I don't understand it. And as somebody who, again, I'm not gonna go into it. But as somebody who comes from a background of a certain amount of trauma, I couldn't relate. Like I was like, this is not how this. I mean, and trauma is different for everyone, and people, you know, experience it differently and react to it differently. But even still, I was like this. To me, I can't wrap my brain around why he's acting this way or doing these things or saying these things or, you know, um, even though he's like, he's explicitly saying, well, it's because I don't belong in the world of mages and, uh, you know, and this and this and this. And I'm like, I get that, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. It was like, it was a lot of telling and I didn't feel it and it didn't really, you know, <sighs> yeah, so <laughs> Yeah, and then like Baz was Baz, but I wanted more dynamism between him and Simon. They just kind of float through this book together. There's not, even when at one point Baz is angry and Simon's like, well, don't be angry with me yet. You know, wait till tomorrow and be angry with, angry with me tomorrow or whatever. And then like, the, you know, I don't know. There was not, I didn't feel like there was enough actual conflict all of the conflict felt very like marshmallowy and not tense and uh and then the same with the plot with this cult leader and everything like and simon wants to believe it and baz is like don't be an idiot and even still that conflict didn't feel tense or meaningful and then the shepherd and Penelope stuff, which was actually kind of cute. Although, honest to God, why does everybody with Penelope's knees? Okay, like, 
I would understand if there was one character who just was always like, Penelope has the cutest knees. And I'd be like, that's a character trait for that character. That character has a thing. But like, it's every character. And I'm like, now I'm like, does the author have a thing about knees? Girls' knees for some reason? What is the deal with the knees? Also, the eye rolling. I swear to God. Again, if one character had a habit of rolling his or her eyes, I would get it. Everybody in this book rolls their eyes all the time. They, they should all just have injuries from, like, the ligaments in their eyes, you know? Like, I'm just like, stop. Like, I wanted to go through, go back, and just highlight every time somebody rolled their eyes. Just to see, like, how colorful this book would be with that highlighted in it. Like, give them other gestures, give them other characteristics than eye rolling as a way to express themselves. Because what like I, I know people who roll their eyes but not everybody does it all the time if everybody you know rolls their eyes all the time something's something's wrong with you you're the problem because people feel the need to roll their eyes at you and that's that's not good you're doing something to exasperate people and make them roll their eyes don't be that person don't be that reason like <laughs> But, like, if, if you know somebody who just happens, that's, like, their thing, you know, then, um, yeah, that makes sense. It's, like, it's, like, this need to give the, the characteristics to everyone instead of saying, well, this is the kind of person who does this. You know, here's a person who fiddles with their watch band, and here's a person who rolls their eyes, and here's a person who fixates on knees, and here's a person who, that would make sense to me. I would get it. Um, but here, everybody does all the things, and therefore the characterization ends up being very just kind of monotonous and gray across the board. Um, and I used to think that the characters were a little bit better delineated, but now they've all just kind of become this mishmash of, um, I don't know, everybody, everybody's kind of alike. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, okay. Again, I, I said like five minutes ago I was going to stop, but now I really will stop. And, you know, um, let me know your thoughts if you read the book, if you didn't read the book. Um, but overall, you know, it's not the worst thing I've ever read, but it definitely didn't like, like, carry on like I felt a spark from it and Wayward Son. I enjoyed enough to want to write fan fiction afterwards. And this, I just like, it dampened the it just dampened it for me um so that's a shame i guess is the bottom line there all right next i've got some i've got crying in h mart i've got another book but right now i'm also um uh, promoting ghosts of marshley park because it's coming out in october <clears throat> finally have proofs um Showing you the proof yet? <laughs> it might be probably saw my bed inside my pillow right there. Um, so this out in October, October nineteenth. You can pre-order it now. I can put links in the description box. Uh, there's going to be a Goodreads giveaway starting July thirty first. Um, so if you want a chance at an advanced copy, that would be. Um, that would be the way to go. I've got 24 copies to give away. And yeah, okay, now, <laughs> finally, done, 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 done. Uh, next, uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm reading next. I kind of haven't been reading much. Um, I only slogged through this because my daughter was like, give it to me now, and she'll probably like it more than I did. Because, uh, you know, she's a little more forgiving than I am, maybe. <laughs> okay. Take care.